development. 19 hours ago, the agency began raids at Central Balaji's official residence in Chennai. A few hours later, his office at the Secretariat was raided. Two locations, hordes of documents sifted through and hours of questioning later, Senthil Balaji was arrested. But that wasn't the end of the story. This is how the DMK minister was taken out of his residence. A 47-year-old man bursting into tears, clutching his chest as he was shifted into an ambulance to be taken to the hospital. Writhing in pain until he was taken inside the hospital in a near-unconscious state. At the crack of dawn, DMK leaders, 15 ministers, queued up at the hospital to visit Senthil Balaji. They all had one thing to say. This is vendetta. It's a blatant misuse of agency, they said. The chief minister of the state, the chief of the DMK too, wasted no time to be by Senthil Balaji's side. MK Stalin claimed that such was enforcement directed torture that his colleague ended up in the hospital. He asked if it was necessary for ED officers to act in such a dehumanizing manner. Stalin alleged a violation of legal procedures as well. So was Senthil Balaji unfairly targeted then? Is he a victim of misuse of agency as the opposition alleges or is it just about probe like the BJP says? Should there be higher standards of propriety for an elected representative? Before we dive deeper into that, let me break down the case for you. Senthil Balaji has been arrested in an alleged recruitment scam. It comes in the wake of income tax department raids conducted uh, across more than 40 locations in the state linked to the minister and several of his aides, his brother as well. The roots of the case can be traced back to when Senthil Balaji was in the AIA DMK. He was the transport minister from 2011 to 2015. In 2018, a technical employee of the Metropolitan Transport Corporation filed a petition in the Madras High Court shedding light on the alleged deception in job offers within the MTC. The petitioner claimed that false promises of employment were made at various levels with Senthil Balaji and his associates purportedly accepting bribes amounting to over 4 crore rupees. Cut to a few years later when Senthil jumped ship to the DMK. He is now the Prohibition and Excise Minister. The BJP and the AIA DMK, who are now in opposition, accused the minister of overseeing a scam in the excise department. Like I just pointed out, the man in question faces allegations from his tenure both with the DMK and the AIA DMK. So who exactly is Senthil Balaji and why does he wield the kind of clout that he does across both those Dravidian parties? Now he is a young leader. He entered politics at the age of 21. He is the Minister of Electricity, Prohibition and Excise in Tamil Nadu at the moment. In 2006, he was elected from Karur on an AIA DMK ticket. 2011 to 2015, like I pointed out, he served as a transport minister in the AIA DMK government. In 2016, he quit the AIA DMK after Jailalata's death. 2016, he sided with TTV Dinakaran after the AIA DMK split between the EPS and the OPS camp. In 2018, he joined the DMK. He was elected an MLA from the DMK in 2019. He's a key face of the Stalin government. He enjoys huge clout in Western Tamil Nadu. He's a popular face on his home turf of Karur. He's the minister in charge of Coimbatore at the moment. He owns properties across Chennai, across Coimbatore and of course his bastion of Karur. He has a grand house in Karur on income tax department's radar. That has been something that the income tax has been investigating as well. Now, Senthil Balaji's arrest has invoked sharp reactions, not just from the DMK, but from a united opposition who calls this a political witch hunt. There are many opposition leaders that have been under the radar of multiple central agencies in cases of corruption. Do these cases reach their logical conclusion? Let's take a look at some of them. Rahul and Sonia Gandhi of the Congress Party, the National Herald case, the Enforcement Directorate is uh, probing charges of money laundering. The status is that they are now out on bail granted by the Patiala House Court. P. Chidambaram, also from the Congress, a former union minister. In the INX media case, he faces allegations of quid pro quo. What's the status now? He's been granted bail. Proceedings are still pending. Another Congress leader, D.K. Shiv Kumar, he's now the Deputy Chief Minister of Karnataka. Money laundering allegation is something that he faces too. What's the status? He's been questioned multiple times. The probe is still underway. Lalo Prasad Yadav of the RJD, former Chief Minister of the state. A fodder scam is something that he's been convicted in. Currently, he's out on bail. He's been questioned in other scams as well. Manish Sisodia of the Amadmi Party, former Deputy Chief Minister of Delhi. As far as the Delhi excise liquor policy goes, the Enforcement Directorate and the CBI are probing allegations of irregularities in the policy formulation. What's the status? He was arrested. He's now under investigation. Satendra Jain of the Amadmi Party, also a former minister in Delhi. Both the ED and the CBI leveled money laundering cases against him, money laundering charges. He was arrested, the investigation is underway, he's now out on bail. K. Kavita of the BRS. Liquor policy that is uh, under the radar as far as Delhi is concerned. 
that is also linked to the BRS and to Telangana. The ED and the CBI have alleged that she benefited from proceeds of crime. She's been questioned, she's been summoned, the probe is underway. Cut across to West Bengal, where TMC's Abhishek Banerjee is also under the radar of the agencies in the alleged scam of coal smuggling. The ED claims that he received proceeds of crime. What's the status? So far, he has protection from arrest by the Supreme Court. Partha Chatterjee of the TMC as well, West Bengal SSC scam. The ED alleged that there are irregularities in recruitment. He was arrested by the ED. The probe is underway. A leader from Maharashtra, Sanjay Raut, he too faces allegations of money laundering as far as the Patra Chol redevelopment case is concerned. He has been granted bail by a special court. Now, when we talk about cases reaching their logical end, it is in terms of conviction rate. One of the reasons why the opposition claims that these arrests and cases are out of vendetta is because of the conviction rate. But here are the figures. On an average, from 2015 to 2022, the CBI's conviction rate has been over 60%, like you can see on your screens. Let's also look at what the ED's uh, record is. The ED's record is also much higher than that. Now, does the opposition's charge of this being a witch hunt hold any water? If you go by pure numbers, it would appear so. In 10 years of UPA era, there are 43 opposition leaders were, that were probed as opposed to 118 during the nine years of the Modi government. From 20, 2004 to 2014, 29 leaders of the Congress and their allies were under the scanner. While under the NDA rule from 2014 till now, only six BJP leaders have been probed by the agencies.